unique opportunity. We've got a Kubota U17 sitting here with a few of our other brands. So we're able to kind of do what everybody asks us for, a Kubota versus a Groundhog. So we have a Kubota U17. Uh, specs on these run 3,860 pounds and they run 10 foot eight of reach. I don't have an exact fit for it. I mean, this one is just a little bit bigger, more like a Kubota KX018. It is about 11 foot six of reach. Again, around 10 foot six. And remember our ZH20 is about nine foot six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run these two and then that one and see speed of rotation, speed of operations on hydraulics and a couple other things. But I'm also gonna give you a quick visual. That way you can put your eyes on. Now I haven't personally weighed it. Me personally, I, I bet I'm gonna come up a little light if I throw that in the scale because the measurement for the length of reach was like 12 foot eight. And when I measured it just today, it was 10 foot six. So, uh, or 10 eight, I don't remember exactly, but we're gonna show you uh, just, like I said, side by side at these two sitting here, you can see that the groundhog has more room to get on. The other thing the groundhog has is hydraulic foot pedals. So for your travel, you got hydraulic foot pedals here and you have your thumb right here. Your side swing is in a joystick and your blade is in a joystick. So on the Kubota unit, it's all mechanical where you run just a mechanical foot pedal for side swing, mechanical foot pedal for auxiliaries and mechanical or, or hydraulic for these. And then same thing pretty much on the, the layout. Otherwise your armrests are here and I've had people, you know, make comments every direction. So we're gonna address a lot of that right now. One comment being our bucket sizes. So here's a standard Kubota bucket, all right? 12 inches wide and nine inches deep, okay? I don't know if my camera guy can see that or not. So nine inches, depth of 12 and 12, all right? So now we're gonna back up here. Here's a standard for the KH30, standard bucket of 16 of 10 and the mouth opening of 16 and then on the groundhog it's going to be 14 so 14 inches mouth opening of 15 inches and depth of just about 10. so more capacity in a groundhog bucket so when we're digging dirt we're taking more obviously you can throw bigger buckets on your kabotas and so on i get that I don't need anybody to make that argument for us. We understand that you can put bigger buckets. I'm just saying that we've had customers that get these, that standard bucket is that size. Our booms, very similar layouts, very similar layouts. So as you can see here, boom steel eight, boom steel eight. I mean, uh, everything is very similar down to the mounting brackets. So mounted here on the boom, Mounted here on the boom. I mean, a lot of this stuff is, is similar. Uh, undercarriage is a little bit different on the 30 compared to our 20, but 20 to 17, the expandable tracks. I mean, right here is your tube steel or square stock, I mean. So square stock to a cylinder in the center. Square stock to a heavier cylinder in the center. Square stock protectors on the outside. And then our blade has an extra flange here and double plated. When we come back here, and I know this is a lot of back and forth, but it's really no other way to do it. We just have a standard tube steel blade. I mean, uh, it's really, if you're looking one to the other, ours has the extra grommeter or the extra collar around the, the blade. We have uh, curl protection. So look at the Kubota blade. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I just want to show everybody side to side. Kubota blade, flat steel. And groundhog blade has curl protection, which when you're pushing stuff, it gives you an extra uh, strength. And then it has edge protection. The 30, it, I'm still working on, but uh, essentially we figured, hell, if, if Kubota's doing it, why can't we? But the supports that we add otherwise, so we have a heavy steel on the inside, and then we tube around to it. And then we have the support flanges here that then come to our wings. These just have a swing out. So, you know, side by side, again, we have a heavier build. Let's go to the undercarriage, all right? So let's look under here. Now the, the Kubota is running 
It is running, uh, let's call it three eighths, maybe five sixteenths. And the groundhog is running half. So again, we are heavier. So I don't know how this machine is going to come up heavier than ours. So that machine, exact weight, dry weight, not filled with fluids, is 2960. The specs on this are saying, I think, 38. Again, I don't need a bunch of hate over if I'm not exactly right. I can tell you my length measurement for the boom is exactly right. We're going to do that in the next video. We're going to lay some of these out. We're going to do some pickups, and we're going to do Kubota versus Groundhog. But my room, I mean, to get onto my machine compared to the Kubota, I have... 14 inches, and on the Groundhog, I have about 18 inches. And again, more room, bigger platform, same layout as far as the tanks and so forth, but if I can get this open. They always have a pain in the ass with the latches. Ah. Okay, so I'll get that in the next one, but I want to show you. And, and right there's another one. So nice and simple in ours. And our panels lay out that you can actually get engine. to your The air filter just comes out to get out of the way uh, to get to your engine. Still Kubota engine in there. I will pop this on the next one and kind of show you guys, uh, again, some operations, a little bit more on the internals. But side to side, I don't know how I spend 44000 whatever your neighbor... You know, neighboring Kubota dealer may be 38 to 44 to 46, somewhere in them ranges. But this has a polymolded canopy. This has your steel. That is hit or miss, which one you like, which one you don't. Again, ours are going to be steel in the 30s and the 25. So if that one doesn't suit you, but right here in this range, I wanted to show you this unit, roughly 38 to 44, open station. As it sits, no thumb. Again, no thumb. Uh, ours are all going to come with a thumb, higher capacity bucket, same steel gauge thickness or more. That one I should have, you know, to be fair, let's do that. We're going to measure the base on this one as well. And just to be fair, that way we see it from, from one to the other size to size. Keeping in mind, that was a 5 16 and we still have half inch. Almost all of our bases are half inch except my one ton units. So we have a heavier steel on our base plates. Now, their track on this unit is longer than that unit, but it's the same as this unit. So that track and that track are the same. And that is the same. Uh, actually, that one's not the same. The one-ton one's the same as the Kubota KX008. So the 0.8 tons are going to have that same exact track on. So there's nothing different from that unit to a one-ton unit in a Kubota. So same track, same everything, same width. Uh, we have, a, I think, a nice layout to get onto the unit. Plus, you sit up a little higher, and when you're trying to look down the ditch, if you're sitting down here, you can't see down your ditch, all right? So we have, uh, shoot, I think it was six inches more, about four foot, maybe not four, maybe it wasn't six inches, it was, it was four inches, so which might not sound like a lot, but, you know, again, the height, you're going to be able to see down in it, and to go back into this guy, so... 26.9, around 40, 16.9 base price. You can buy two of them, throw one away, use it for the same timeline, and still have the same money out or less money out than what you would have paid for this one. So, uh, and this one here is 26.9 with a cab, with heat, with AC, with a hydraulic thumb, with auxiliary hydraulics, with heavier plating steel, with the same stuff. So, just kind of going down the line of a U17. Now we're going to do some demonstration in the next video. I didn't want to put it all in one. They're going to be long enough. I know I'm, I'm going to lose some people throughout and I'm going to get some hate for this, but it's not fair for everybody to hate and not take the information back. So if you want the information, I'm going to provide the information. I spent and bought this machine out of my, and if someone wants this machine for 20 grand, I'll sell a U17. That's the cheapest one in the market right now. It's got 1300 hours. Or I'll sell you a brand new Groundhog with a Kubota engine and a lot of the same layout for less money. That's brand new. So just keeping this stuff in mind, we have a full line. Now, this one is going to be a zero tail swing. I'll give credit where it's due. A U17 is zero tail swing. Ours does have some tail swing, but that also kind of helps if you're digging to the side. If you've never dug with a zero tail swing, they're great if you're in tight areas. But that also 
when you come over to the side, so it's great when you're digging straight on, all right? You dig straight on. When you go to the side, you got that heavy bucket. Boom, you're on your nose because you got nothing to spill it, to stabilize yourself on the other side. So I just wanted to cut this video a little bit shorter just to give you the information, just to give you some specs on them. And now we're going to do one where, you know, I'm going to see if that one picks up this one because, again, the weights are more similar than this one to that one. And I'm going to do rotation from that one to this one. And we're just going to do some comparisons from one to the other. But you'll be able to see the actual operations of that and then the actual dimensions that we've already given you. So I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, we're gonna give the next video here, probably another longer one, but I, I just wanted to get all the information out for them people that are trying to do them comparisons and they, they don't have the money to put them side by side. So that's what we did. We put a Kubota here. Uh, and again, you can buy this machine. If you wanna buy this machine, it's for sale, but we also are gonna have our groundhog units here as well. I'll catch you guys in the next one. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you later.